Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is called uh, Scatter Plots and Trend Lines. Some people call them linear regression lines, some people call them best fitted lines. So they're just lines of scatter plots that we're going to make. So a scatter plot is just a graph of points representing uh, two sets of data. We've done this before. Uh, probably not formalized like this, but I'm sure everybody's done this. Correlation, uh, uh, it measures the strength and the direction of a relationship between two variables, okay? And so the, the more uh, closely the points are to a line, the correlation gets uh, stronger. And so here's an example of a positive correlation. This is a positive correlation because these points are going up, like think of positive slope of a line. These are going up in a positive direction, so that would be a positive uh, correlation. Here is a negative correlation right here. And then when they look like there's no, you know, no direction at all, it's just no correlation right there, okay? So uh, here's an example. So the table below represents uh, two variable data for seven different cities in the northern hemisphere. So here we have uh, the latitude right here, and here's the average temperature for these. So Here's all the cities right here, and then I just I, I enlarged that picture right there. So the, the the latitude is is you know how high they are on our Earth's uh, hemisphere. So something like that anyway. So the two variables here are going to be latitude and the average temperature right here. Okay, and then always 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 you guys when we have given a table this is always the x axis. This is always the y axis. Okay, so it's when we graph this that's what we're going to do. So we're going to plot this data on the grid that they provide for us. So here's a grid right here. Notice uh, this is our x-axis down here, which is down here. This is our x-axis, and this is our y-axis right here, okay? So let's go ahead and um, uh, graph them one at a time. So here's the first one right here. And then here's the second one right there. So here's uh, London right there. London's over here at uh, 51 and a half. So there's 50, so a little bit past that. And it goes up to 51.8, okay? So so about 52-ish almost right there. Okay, let's keep going with the rest of them here. There's Moscow. There's uh, the next one, the next one. And then finally, the next one right there, okay? All right, that one's pretty close to a line. Can you see a line that kind of fits all of that data pretty well? Okay, so the variable are um, uh, negatively correlated because it's going down in a, in a negative fashion, like a negative slope right there, okay? So uh, why are the points and scatter plots not connected in the same way that uh, linear equations are? You know, like when we uh, graph straight lines, well, straight lines or any connected trace uh, represents a continuous set of points, but data and scatter plots represent discrete points. Remember, discrete points uh, are non-connected points. If we connected the points in this scatter plot, it would incorrectly imply that the data, there is data between the two scattered points, and there isn't on that. So, so the correlation coefficient, which is denoted by the lowercase letter r, varies from negative 1 to positive 1. And strongly correlated data points are plotted closely to a straight line and have a, uh, an r value or correlation coefficient value that's either going to be negative 1 or positive 1. It won't be you know, exactly negative 1. It like by, might be negative 0.98 or negative 0.97843, something like that, and close to positive 1, like 0.999, okay? It'll never be beyond that. It'll never be like 1.1. .1. Um, a slope can be, but um, correlation coefficient can't. The correlation coefficient um, is is between negative one and positive one. Don't worry too much about that, you guys. So weakly correlated data uh, points have an R value that's close to zero. So here's a strong negative correlation. Can you see all these points are close to that line that goes down right there? So we're going to say R is close to negative one because it's negatively correlated. Okay. Here is a strongly positive correlation correlated one right there. Here is a weak negative correlation. See how the points aren't so linear right here? So we, we'll say um, uh, that R is somewhere between 0 and negative 1, maybe like negative 0.5 or something like that, okay? Um, and if you have, uh, here's a weak positive correlation where R is somewhere between 0 and 1. So it's probably close to 0.5 right there, okay? So Use the scatter plot in each uh, uh, figure that we have coming up here to estimate the value of R. Indicate whether R is close to negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or 1. Okay, so here's the first one, the graph that we just did right there. Okay, can you see a nice line going down right through there? 
if there's a nice line that gets it's really close to all those points, then we say that this is strongly correlated. And since it has a negative slope, then R is going to be close to negative 1. Okay, Since it's strongly correlated, strongly means it's going to be close to either negative 1 or positive 1, depending on if it's going in a negative fashion or if it's going up in a positive fashion. Okay, Here's another one right here. What do you think that is right there? Are those close to a line? No way. So there's no correlation with the data. So we say R is close to 0 right there. How about that one right there? Definitely that one's a strong correlation and it has a positive slope. So R would be close to 1 right there. How about this one right here? Well, that one has a, a positive uh, uh, correlation. They're kind of going up right there, but it, it's not very strong. It's weakly correlated right there. So um, uh, it'll have R that's close to uh, the point uh, 5 right there. Okay. All right. So determine a best fitted line for the scatter plot and write an equation. Okay, so here we go, you guys. So here's our first graph right here. We're going to determine a best fitted line. So this is how we do it. We first draw a line that closely fits that data. Okay, so there's a line that closely fits that data. And then we pick two points, uh, one at each end. So one over here on this end and then one over here on this end right here. Okay, it looks like this uh, line's going through right there, which is at, for me, 15 and 85 right there and it looks like it's going to go right through there which for for this graph is at 60 40 right there so we'll pick two points at the ends of the line that fits the data well okay so let's pick those two points right there all right and then uh, now your two points might be a little bit different uh, in fact the book picked a little bit different the book went up here a little bit beyond um, uh, but you want to pick two lines that best fits the data. And if it fits the data well, then our equation is going to be close enough, you guys. Okay, so there's the ones that I picked right there. So now write an equation of uh, that line. That should say that line right there. Let me uh, finish that. So of that line uh, that goes through those two points right there. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just uh, so erase that air on all of these right there. Okay, so first we've got to find the slope, you guys. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this y minus this y over this x minus this x. Okay, and this worked out nicely. It gave us negative 1 as our slope right there. All right, and then we got to find uh, our b, you guys, y equals mx plus b. So when we find y equals mx plus b, y equals negative 1x plus b, and I chose to plug in this point right here. We could have plugged in this point right here. Either one would have given us b equals 100 right there. So our equation is going to be y equals negative 1x plus 100 right there, okay? All right. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me get rid of that there. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I've been copying and pasting all that. I just moved it up so we can fit it all in there right there. Okay, so the textbook uh, uses the points uh, 1095. So they went, uh, so it went like right through here at 1095 right there. And so they used the same 60, 40 right there. And, they, and that 1095 gave them the slope negative 1.1, which gave the y-intercept of 106. Okay, these are really close right here. And in the next lesson, part two of this lesson, we're going to use these what's called best fitted line equations to make some predictions. That's the next lesson, okay? So, okay, so here's a table that shows the boiling point of water at different altitudes. Alongside the table over here is a scatter plot of all that data right there, okay? So here's 6210. That's this dude right here, okay? 597, so almost um, uh, 600 right here. So that would be right about there. There's 500, so 600, and then uh, that one's also 210. So see how those guys are horizontal? So here's all these five points right right here on that scatter plot. So let's draw a line that best fits that data. Okay, right there. Okay, and then we're going to pick a couple of points right here. Pick two points and write an equation. Okay, this one's a good one to pick right there because that's our B. That's our y-intercept right here. And then I'll pick this one uh, right here. I think I picked that one. Well, actually, I picked 6,201, but I definitely picked this one up here, 0, 2, 11 right there, because that gives us B. That just eliminates some of our work, some of our work. So here's our slope right there, and then uh, so we get negative 1 over 600, so Y equals MX plus B. There's our equation right there, okay? All right, if you guys are in my class, that would be your assignment.